Hey guys, welcome to this week's Photoshop edit walkthrough and this week we will be going through this image here. So this image came about recently. Um, I shot the model last year around summertime and I never got around to using the images. Just, I was just too busy with commercial work but with a little bit of spare time recently I decided to go back into this shoot and edit some of the images. Uh, so this is the image here. The model I shot in the studio, the rest of the image is made up from stock images, free stock online. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. So I'll just shut this down and this play the video. So as you can see, this is the straight out of camera image. Um, making the selection, as always, I use the pen tool. I use this curves adjustment layer here just to brighten up the image so it's easier to see where I am cutting out. Um, when using the pen tool. As always the pen tool is my go-to for selections. It's, it gives you the best selections. Um, if you use it you can use it in a way where you do one selection for the body, one selection for the hair and you can use refine edge on the hair. It makes your life easier. Uh, I feel if you use the refine the quick selection tool or do you know one of those quick methods of doing it you always have to go in and Re refine the selection anyway so you may as well just take a little bit longer and use the pen tool so I'm just going to fast forward a little bit now as you see me using the pen tool so here's my selection here for the um, the body of the model and then I'll do a little bit of refine edge along the hair here saving selection as you can see and then just using the refine um, edge brush tool up here and just going along the hair like so. It's not always perfect but it's a good starting uh, base for um, when you're cutting out models and models hair. So here is the stock image um, I believe from Adobe stock. So this the background actually took quite a while so I took these uh, stock images of um, piles of televisions I was going to cut out all the monitors and then I just decided that this would just take forever. So, um, oh, did I do that? Uh, actually, I, I feel like I may have done that. Um, as It started off as an image and it wasn't going to be as complicated and then it just kind of spiralled out of control. Um, so as you can see now, Opening the image into Photoshop, bringing the stock image in behind. Yep, as you can see, I started uh, making selections of all the screens and then stopped halfway through. I oh, know, and then I started making them again. So again, making the selections of all the screens. Just trying to think back to what I actually did with this, <laughs> with this image, and I'm start, I can't even remember doing all this. But I, I can do remember it took a long time. So I'm guessing, yeah, I did make selections of all the of all the screens. So let's just fast forward this a bit. So I would then bring the image into um, behind the model. I use the curves adjustment to pull it down. And then I, using the same one, bring it into the background again. Sometimes you can do that and just reverse the image over. So what I'm doing now is I am painting all the screen. I wanted the monitors or the TVs to have that kind of retro feel where they had the green screen back in the 80s or early 90s uh, and have some kind of matrix style um, text on them and then having some green glow what will then be lighting the model from behind as you can see now i'm, I'm just painting green over this uh, over the screens of all the computers um tv sorry with hue and saturation and then i go in and just refine and paint away where i painted over the tv 
And as you can see, I made all the selections of the, the monitors as well. Um, here you go. And then I can use curves just to brighten or darken those screens as needed. So now I'm just adding, creating a blank layer and adding some glow to the screens. And a linear dodge blend mode. And then I use the fill to then lower the, uh, the opacity of the screens. And then I used, um, again, linear dodge to add a little bit more glow to the center of the screens. When you're creating glow, it's not just one process. It's a couple of blank layers in a, in a setup, in a sequence. And usually get everything into place and then I tidy everything up towards the end. Again, just just adding the glow to all these screens was actually quite time consuming. Uh, I brought this the creation of this image up into into maybe a few days because there's only so much uh, tedious uh, kind of painting of things in you can do in, in one sitting. So as you can see, I was wanting the glow, the green glow of the what well, that we got on the model in the studio to be kind of the glow from the TVs in the background. And I didn't, I did not think about this image beforehand. So I was, I was using the lights on the model to think of a backstory for what was going on in the background. Sometimes it's always better to pre-plan before you do, but sometimes it's fun just to get a model. Um, into Photoshop and see what you can create around the pose and the outfit and the lighting. So now I'm just bringing a, a image of a sky which was from my own stock library. And I'm just using uh, hue saturation to change uh, the color and the tone of the sky. Now using the camera raw fill to bring out the shadows on the model. Now, we, as you can see here, we've added some foreground interest again, using some TVs into the front of the image to get to create some depth of field. Now, just tidying up some of the glows on the TV, just on a layer mask, just painting away where the, it's kind of leaked over the edge. Now with curves, uh, curves adjustment again, darkening the actual box, the frame of the TVs, and then bringing in some overlays to use as the glow on the monitor of the TV, on the glass area. Again, quite a time consuming process. And then trying to switch, uh, trying to treat, and just use the same one and switch it over to the to the pile of TVs behind. Not always as successful as it as it could be. Now I'm playing with blend if on the lens flare. Now here's a texture I got from Deviant Art. So I'm just bringing that in and on a screen blend mode, just uh, transforming it and warping it onto the monitors, onto the TVs. Again, this was very time consuming using uh, free transform warp to, to curve the texture as well. And then I use layer masks to blend away when it's overlapping onto other TV screens. So all this um, kind of around here is the selections. I Again, as I mentioned earlier, this is actually from the quick selection tool, I believe. I used to select out this these TVs because they were on a white background. So what I did later, it's not, it's not actually in this video, I went in and cleaned all these uh, lines off the selection. So as you can see now, going through and just adding more textures to the, more of the textures to the TV screens. 
So let's just fast forward this a little bit. Again, still adding, and this took this took quite a long time. Don't know what else, some crazy music going on. <laughs> um, let's fast forward a little bit more. Again, just adding the same um, textures to the TVs behind. Warping them on and then getting the ones where we couldn't get them behind this model. Going through. Again, now swapping over to the TVs on the opposite side and doing the same. So as you can see, this was the main bulk of the of the creating the image. Now just going into the model and, and cleaning up with the uh, healing brush, just going through and getting rid of some of the hairs on her face and some of the marks on her legs and just a quick little tidy. I didn't go deep in, into retouching. And then using a the curves adjustment, the RGB color curves, just to add some green into the model. And then tidying around the hair and the outline of the masking of the model with a brush. Again with a brush just going out. Oh, no. Now create a little bit of rim light on the model on a blank layer which clips to the model. Just painting in the highlights around the edges. Adding some um, of the glow from the, of the TVs to, the, to her head and then Again, dealing with some masking issues on the layer mask. Again, all this is non-destructive, so you can go in and out of layers. Now, adding some more of that glow on a blank layer, just painting with a, norm, uh, a brush set to normal. Now, again, going into masking, going through the crown, just using the brush to erase where it is on the layer mask. Using curves now just to pull down the darks and then enhance the highlights on the side of the model. Because if she was being lit from behind, the kind of center of the model would be darker than the uh, the sides because the light, is, light source is coming from behind. And now bringing in another a stock image, just a stock image of a cross to place on top of the pile of TVs. Also adding some color contrast with reds to the greens, uh, and just I place put the crosses on a screen blend mode, and then just place them into the image, and then just uh, painting some hairs around, light hairs around the the crosses, and using soft light blend mode just to paint red into the eyes, how they can barely see the the eyes. It's just a hint of red. Now dodging and burning the, the face of the model and the body of the model as we go along. Again, always using curves, dodge and burn. I, 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 I dodge and burn every image, so I and mean, you've probably seen this a million times in, in all the other walkthroughs that I've done. Dodge and burn can give the image that very painterly illustrated kind of comic book feel. So you can spend as long on it as you want, or as little as you want, depending on the look you want. <laughs> so now I'm just going for the color grade using a gradient map. Uh, choosing dark green and greens for the, for the gradient map and then getting some colour into the shadows with selective colour. So setting it to blacks and then pulling some reds 
um, into the into the shadows. Now adding some more glow to the screens behind. Adding a little bit of misting on a blank layer, just painting it in with a, a cloud or a mist brush. Again, trying to get some uh, separation between the model and some of the background and the foreground. This is near the end now. So that was me just stopping and probably taking in the image and looking, seeing what works and what doesn't. I think in the end up I didn't use the mist. Or maybe I just kind of pulled it down very slightly so you got a little bit of contrast. And then just playing with the glow now, trying to work out what looks best. And that is basically the final image. So what I did do is go back in and I just cleaned up the masking and a few of the little areas on the um, around the model. But apart from that, um, that is it. So as you can see, again, the, if it wasn't for all the putting in the textures onto the TVs, uh, it would have probably been quite a short image. But sometimes the the things what we see think could be quite easy to turn out to take a lot longer than we think. But uh, yeah, I was quite happy with how this image turned out. It wasn't planned, like I said. I kind of just went with the, the image kind of just evolved as I went along. And sometimes that's the fun of Photoshop. So cheers, guys. If you've got any comments, leave them below. And feel free to hit me up on social media. Uh, if you've got any questions, uh, cheers for watching. Appreciate it. Peace.